This is the 15th annual Research Park Interns Awards. It's the longest running event I think we have in the research park that serves um, the corporations as celebrating the interns. And I think that's reflective of the role and importance that students play in driving new technologies and helping with the future talent and workforce of major corporations that are located here in the research park, as well as helping startup companies in formative years of their ventures to get off the ground and where they really need the talents of students, undergraduates and graduates to help them build products, new companies and new ventures. So um, with that, I'd really like to, to honor um, not only the students, but also all the people who help judge and put this event together. It does take a lot of work to get these nominations done. So thank you for, for everybody who did that. We did have a whole group of judges. And so thank you to our judges. Um, Ade from Enterprise Works is our human resources intern, a graduate student here at the University of Illinois. So thank you, Ade. Laura Blyle from Enterprise Works in the Research Park. Trevor George from Brunswick from his big new 9,000 square foot shiny office here in the research park. Julia Hart from Country Financial Digital Lab. Emily Neal from Enterprise Works and Research Park who leads our talent programs. And Trina Voss from Corteva AgroScience um, who is recently relocating here from Iowa. So we're excited to have his help and um, he's a computer vision and machine learning expert. So welcome Shreena Voss to our community and you're already getting started as a volunteer. If I announce your name as a finalist, please give us a wave so that we can recognize you. Um, if you could come off a of video for that, that would be great to see your face. Um, and maybe you could do a thumbs up or something that is uh, one of the emojis so that we know you're present. Your manager will be invited if you are um, to say a few words after you are announced as a finalist and I will announce the winner of the category. So if you're here, we'd love to recognize you in some way as a finalist or a winner. The winners will be asked themselves to say a few words about their experience. So both the manager and the recipient as the student will speak if you are a winner. If you're a finalist, we'll ask your manager to just briefly introduce you and your work. Um, I hope that that will provide us a little bit more information about the excellent work taking place here in the park. Winners will receive trophies in the mail. Some of you are present, some of you are not. So we're just gonna go ahead and mail those and all the finalists will receive certificates. So without further ado, let's begin the award ceremony. We're excited to recognize many of you. And the first category we will honor tonight and recognize is the best non-technical innovation in the research park. And many of you know that there are engineers and scientists in many different fields, but to make that technology get to market, it takes a lot of other types of skills as well and to make these operations successful. And so this award recognizes those that perhaps are not an engineer or software developer, but are contributing amazing things to their organizations and truly interdisciplinary teams create better innovation. So it's important to recognize those, those skills and accomplishments. And the first, finalist for the award is Anna Chi. And I cannot see the gallery anymore. Let me try to get back to the gallery so I can see if I, um, I've got it on spotlight view, but maybe if Kathy, you can take me off of spotlight view and then I can see smiling faces. Do we see Anna? Uh, Laura, we can't uh, turn on video. It says that the host has it blocked. Okay, hopefully somebody fixes that soon. <laughs> All right, Trevor. I'm gonna ask you to start saying something nice about Anna, then we'll hopefully get it fixed in time for you to both be on video. Perfect, so uh, yeah, I can talk about Anna. So Anna has been uh, with Brunswick for over a year now. Uh, she started as an intern uh, at, the, at the beginning of last summer. Oh, I can turn on video. They're live from, live from Brunswick iJet Lab. Oh, even better on a boat is Trevor George, who nominated Anna Chi. <laughs> So uh, yeah, so Anna's been with us for a little over a year. And um, uh, what's been great with Anna is that she works on such a breadth of projects and uh, has really taken uh, quite a few things that we do to a new level. Um, one of the things I nominated her for was the, uh, the newsletters that uh, she put together for us over the last year. We started out with something that was uh, kind of a, uh, an interesting little uh, 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 news capture that, that we highlighted some interesting things going on research park and she's transformed it into something that has the attention of our CTO, CEO, 
um, the CMO. I get notes from them, uh, thanking them for the thanking me for the content and thanking her for the content. And I know that they're reading it because they have commented about how uh, like a link doesn't work or something, and they they reach out specifically lo looking for it. So uh, she's done a fantastic job spotlighting other uh, interns, helping them get noticed by. Uh, the rest of the organization, helping them get jobs as a result of some of her fantastic work. Uh, she also does all of our storyboarding and user uh, user interface uh, heuristic testing and user experience uh, 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 feature creation and uh, just been doing a fantastic job and has brought a tremendous amount of value. And uh, as a result, she ended up being a, a, a full-time employee here now at Brunswick. So we just recently transitioned her from intern to full-time. So uh, congratulations, Anna, and thanks for the uh, great work. Awesome. So happy to see that Anna is going to be taking a full-time position. So I'm going to keep going through the finalists. Again, we will invite the student to say a few words if you are selected as the winner of your category. And if you are the manager, we'll ask you to be the one who introduces your student as a finalist. The next one is Matthew Waldinger from App I don't know if we have Jerome here. Um, I am I am Jerome for today. Oh, so <laughs> Kirsten Phelps is here, and I'm going to say a little bit of something embarrassing. Is I bet Matthew Waldinger's mom is a friend of mine from college. So I'm going to put him on the spot if it's Jenny Waldinger, and I did not know that as part of this award. So his his parents, I think, were student government or student student involvement at the University of Illinois. So that's my little bit of trivia of being around the University of Illinois a long time. Or he's gonna tell me I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, Kirsten, tell us about Matthew. Yeah, so Matthew joined us this past November. So um, since joining us um, and then working a little bit over the past year and a half, he has taken on and really grown immensely in his role. He's our visual designer, not only for the AIC, but also more broadly for our different internal clients at Avvi. So I think one of the most interesting and challenging aspects that Matthew has had to work with um, is that he has multiple bosses. So he works with a lot of different people who have provided projects um, he has taken on, and they all think that their projects are the most important and the most um, needing to get done as soon as possible. And Matthew has taken on challenges um, around kind of scheduling, um, helping to support the creative process on storyboarding and ideation all the way through completion. So just a highlight of some of the ways that he has supported um, not only the AIC, but also the larger organization. He's um, consulted with businesses to help develop brands and logos from scratch to also redesigning existing logos for different organizations um, within Abvi, He's created icons um, and new apps, has wireframed new websites. He's created graphics and layouts for our Abvi Innovation Center year in review report that went to senior management and got a lot of accolades and feedback. He also developed graphics and an icon and a logo for our um, hackathon that we did in June, and also has done a ton on producing editing animations for our internal AIC events um, and videos, as well as um, videos for the larger organization to share new search tools from our AbbVie library um, and different um, groups as well. So he has shown immense creativity, flexibility, time management, um, and really wonderful communication skills. And I think one of the best testaments to how his work has been received at AbbVie has been as he's leaving his internship, um, one of his current clients asked if he would stay on to backfill a full-time designer um, who's taken a leave of absence. And so I think that that is a really great reflection of just his work ethic, um, professionalism, and creativity and what he's brought to AbbVie and our different stakeholders. So thank you, Matthew, and congrats on this nomination. Thank you so much, Kirsten. And thank you, Matthew, for all of your uh, contributions to AbbVie. Congratulations to both of these finalists. They are both very accomplished as you just heard. And the winner for the best non-technical innovation research park uh, intern is Anna Chi. Congratulations, Anna. Anna, can you tell us, tell us a little bit more about what your work at Brunswick means to you? Um, something that I've really enjoyed about Brunswick, which Trevor talked a little bit about, was just the breadth of projects I get to collaborate on. Um, 
I think uh, in school and the design um, class, you don't always get to collaborate with people from all across the field, but here at Brunswick, I get to talk to everyone from engineering to software development um, to even professional designers in the field. And I feel like it has really helped grow as a student and a designer and now as a full time. I know I'll continue to learn from the interns here. Uh, I really want to thank Trevor George and also Max Newberry, who was the software project lead, who helped mentor me um, when I was an intern. Um, and I'm really just thankful to the Brunswick community for just helping me grow as a professional, as a designer, um, learn from their expertise, and helping me kind of grow out of my own comfort zone and learn about other disciplines and how to talk to other people from other disciplines. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna. And again, thank you for deciding to continue your career and journey with Brunswick. We hope you enjoy becoming a full-time employee and have many more contributions to come. Thank you. And congrats to Matthew as well. Um, I also want to move to the next category. And that next category is the best entrepreneurial leadership in a startup. So this recognizes those of you who choose to work in small companies. And I am sitting here live from Enterprise Works, which is here in the Research Park, a location where we have about 60 resident companies working on a range of different technologies. And it gives students in many cases an opportunity to continue work in scientific roles, but also to learn about new venture creation and what it's like to be in a startup company. So the first intern that I would like to recognize as a finalist is Olivia Rentz, and she is a psionic mechatronics intern, undergraduate in biomedical engineering. Do we have Olivia present? We do. She is waving with the ability hand. I see her. Oh, awesome. If we could take it off of spotlight, I hope people can see the people again. Please, somebody, if you could modify. It is not on spotlight. And if I could spotlight Olivia, though. OK, great. All right, Olivia with the ability hand. Woohoo! Awesome. OK, thank you so much. And um, that is one of their products. And I don't know if we have Deepak Bala here to tell a little bit more about Olivia's work. Olivia, you're um, on mute. Oh, I'm, I'm Olivia's other supervisor. What can you guys oh, mute? James is here to tell us about Olivia. Yeah, I'm Olivia's other supervisor. I, I could talk a little bit about um, a little bit about Olivia's extensive accomplishments at Psionic. Um, so Olivia was hired on um, uh, as an intern as part of a program from uh, what's what's the school again? Uh, University. University of Cincinnati. Um, so they sort of partially sponsored it, um, and she's working for the entire year here at Psionic, uh, full time, forty hours a week. So she's a year long intern. Um, and when we hired her, we were like, oh, you know, I bet she'll be okay. Like at the very least, she's getting part sponsor. It's fine. She completely blew our expectations out of the water. Like we were just hoping to have like someone like helping out with general things the entire year, but she has gone above and beyond and taken on so many like roles and initiatives by herself that it's like basically another full-time employee here. Um, just completely exceeded all our wildest dreams for a year long intern. That's great, James. And th thank you for telling us a little bit more about Olivia and Olivia doing a little product placement there with the bionic arm. Appreciate that. Okay, so next up, our next finalist is Daniel Gilo. And he is from Symbiosis and he is a computational biologist intern. And he, interestingly, is also an undergraduate student in bioengineering. And I'm hoping. We've got Dan here to tell you, uh, oh, Dan's here nominated. I'm sorry, I'm seeing you on camera. So that's awesome. And Daniel's manager is John Cole. We've got John from Symbiosis. John also was recently featured in a podcast. And if you'd like to learn more about Symbiosis and how they are trying to do more uh, precise treatment of cancer, you can learn more on John's podcast for the Research Park. All right, John, tell us about Dan. Uh, hi there, Laura. Uh, yeah, so um, I first met Dan, uh, Dan Gilo uh, when he was a junior uh, undergraduate student at the university. I was, I was actually teaching a class um, in, in the bioengineering department for a semester, and uh, he 
was sort of head and shoulders uh, the most um, uh, advanced student in, in, in the class, uh, at least from my perspective. Um, a few months later, uh, when he was uh, applying to graduate school, he had actually asked me uh, to write a letter on his behalf. And as I was writing it, I was thinking about what made uh, Mr. Gilo special as a, as a student and why I thought he was going to become um, a, a successful scientist. And, and I sort of listed out a few of, the, of his, of his um, best qualities. And right at the end of the letter, I had uh, jotted down, I'd written, you know, if, you know, I would hire this man in a heartbeat to join my team um, if I had the chance. And as soon as I had written it, I sort of looked it over and I thought, that, that's 100% right. That's exactly how I feel about him. So the same evening, I, had, uh, I, I sent off, I, I shot him an email asking if he would uh, come join my team uh, as an intern. Um, so I, that, you, that sort of, I hope, gives a sense of, of how much faith and admiration I have for him uh, as a young uh, scientist and engineer. Um, I would say he started off working with us uh, earlier in the summer and probably within 72 hours had uh, made a fairly significant contribution to the work that we're doing. Uh, for those not familiar with symbiosis, um, we are a biotech company that develops essentially decision support software for oncologists. Uh, we build very comprehensive mathematical and computational models of, of individual tumors and allow physicians to simulate what will happen under a range of different treatment options. And some of the work that we do is developing uh, mathematical models of how drugs affect uh, different types of cancers. Uh, and right off the bat, Dan Gilo uh, jumped in, developed uh, from scratch a model of, of a drug called Apatinib, and it's been working on, on another big one um, uh, uh, called Cyclophosphamide. Both of these are, are important in the treatment of breast cancer and many other cancers. Um, and he is, I mean, despite his, his, his uh, youth, uh, one of the most talented young scientists I think I've ever met in my entire life. Uh, so I am so proud to, 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 to have the opportunity to, to mentor Mr. Gilo, and, and I, can't, uh, I can't say enough how excited I am to see what he does as the in, in the future as, as his career progresses. Well, thank you so much, John. I hope that means a lot to you, Dan, of how enthusiastic John is about your career trajectory and your research accomplishments as well. And our next nominee and is a graphic design student. And I'm going to mention that I think I forgot to say when I was introducing some of the other students as I got started tonight that we also had another graphic design student, and that was Matthew Waldinger. And I'll also mention that Anna was industrial design. So we have some really fantastic people from fine and applied arts making accomplishments. Molly Izzy is next, and she is from Ascent Integrated Tech. And she um, is going to be talked about. I saw that. Alex Gorsuch was here, but I think Paul Kalston might be talking about her. Alex is in his office here in Enterprise Works and looks like he's in the witness protection program with the shadow on his face right now. Um, but either Alex or Paul, if you want to talk a little bit more about Molly. And do we have Molly give us a wave? Oh, I see Paul and Alex. So I'll go to Paul since that's what I have on my sheet. Thanks, Laura. And I'm actually sitting right next to Alex here. Uh, we're at a fire conference. So. He's actually not in the witness. He's not in the building, so that's not the shadow. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, just to talk briefly about Molly, I mean, she actually joined our team as an intern through Research Park uh, last fall, back when our logo was literally just this, just that triangle. And then she added on this part and an awesome name. So she's done an incredible job from day one in terms of making a promise and being able to deliver on that promise. Since then, she's gone on to completely revamp our website, which has brought in a ton of customer traction and interest for pilots as well as investors. And since then, she's actually joined us part-time over the summer as our UI X and UX engineer um, to help us build out our application to keep firefighters safe. Um, and every single day she comes in, uh, we kind of assign her some tasks she is able to deliver and she always exceeds expectations. Um, but enough from me, 
I actually want Alex to also say a little bit about Malibu as well. Uh, first, thanks for stealing my uh, wet sack protection um, joke, Laura. So thanks for that. Um, <clears throat> I thought it was going to be great. Anyway, yeah, Molly's awesome. Um, even at like 8 a.m. this morning, um, we were at a diner uh, eating and prepping presentations as startups often do before conferences. And Paula texted her and said, hey, can you get me an asset? And she got it to him within five minutes. Uh, she's been really consistently phenomenal. Um, she's taken such great ownership of our portal. She's taken really great ownership of our website, of our pitch decks. I mean, she's just been really a 10 xer totally phenomenal. Um, and she's also been really uh, focused on customer discovery as we are as a venture and really understanding the customer needs. She's been just fantastic in every way. And that's why uh, she actually just accepted a full-time role with us. <clears throat> That is awesome. Well, it sounds like you got a really stellar student. So congratulations to Alex and Paul for having Molly on your team. And I hope to meet you in the building as we're wandering around a little bit more hard to find in masks as the rules just changed again. But uh, thank you for, for nominating each of these incredible students. I can hear the passion from each of you and talking about their work and it is truly exemplary. And as determined by the judges, again, I'll say there was a group of judges that read these applications and didn't necessarily hear in your voices. So uh, what you each had to say, and it was really powerful. But those of you who wrote in really, I think, um, were able to persuade also of why your students are amazing. And in this category, we are very happy to recognize Olivia from Psionic, back with her bionic arm, um, to tell us more about your experience working at Psionic. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for nominating me and choosing me for this award. It means so much. Uh, when I started at Psionic, I couldn't even hold a screwdriver. Uh, a drill was really heavy. I <laughs> did a lot of crazy things were thrown at me that I wasn't really used to. Uh, but now I'm carbon fiber molding, silicone casting, programming, assembling these hands. And recently I've gotten the opportunity to travel with the CEO, Adil Akhtar, to a bunch of patients. And I've been able to try the handout on all of the patients and it's truly been an amazing experience. I've learned from these patients to have patience with myself as I grow through this career pathway and to also have courage to try new things as they try out our hand. Uh, uh, thank you to everyone who nominated me and for giving me the opportunity to excel in this field and to let me try everything that's been thrown my way. Uh, it's truly been an amazing opportunity and thank you so much for welcoming me on the team. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome job, Olivia. Keep building things that help people. I um, appreciate it. And congratulations to the other nominees and finalists. So the finalists are only selected after many other applications have been read. So you should feel very honored as you're hearing from your managers to make it to the finalists. Um, best technical innovation is going to be our next category. And, and I'm going to have a reef share a few words. Okay, David is the next finalist in this award is for this new award that we're talking about. Now, these are for technological innovations. We talked about there are many engineers working in the research park. There are chemists. There are mechanical engineers we just heard from. And there are people who are making biological discoveries. So it could be any of those things. And the pe best technological technical innovation award tries to recognize their work. The first finalist that I have in this category is David Liu, and he is an intern at Yahoo. Now, it's been an interesting year at Yahoo. We often talk about Yahoo is the largest employer here in the research park, so you are one of many very brilliant people and obviously went above and beyond to be able to be recognized for this award. He is an undergraduate student in computer science, and Dale Nussel is his manager. Do we have Dale today to tell you more about the work of David? Sorry, I think my manager is in a conflicting meeting, so I don't think he can make it. Okay, David, I'm going to have you speak a little bit about your experience then, but I will say some words from Dale on his behalf, who is a senior director 
at Yahoo, he said that David has a strong work ethic. He's dedicated his time towards not only learning the intern project itself, but ramping up to learn new terminologies and ask for clarification. He strives to complete the back end, part one of a software project, um, and that is deployable and seeks opportunities to improve his code quality. David has produced the back end code for a new application that has required many aspects of functionality. He started out work on the front end or visual display for the new application to make it more user friendly. The application was used in the recent 2022 budget planning and performed better than expected. He impressed the entire team and how he was dedicated to achieving milestone after milestone marching through the project. David has a wonderful personality and a positive outlook. He strives for high quality in his work and relishes a, a challenge. I'm proud to advocate for him to receive this award. So those are some words, kind words from Dale for you, David. David, do you wanna say a little comment about your work at Yahoo before I move on? Since you're here. Great. Um, I wanted to thank everyone, my manager, my mentor for really helping me through the summer. I've definitely learned way more than I expected. You know, working from home has definitely changed how my perspective has been for this internship, but I had my doubts at first, but they were all gone the second I got to know everyone. My work environment is great. Everything I'm doing is really meaningful. And I really feel like I'm having some kind of impact into Yahoo. And I really hope to continue working with my, my team in the future. Awesome. Well, thank you, David. Um, I'm going to mention mentioned that it's unusual for a, an undergraduate student to get an internship at Yahoo. So I think that you must have been pretty exceptional for that to even occur. Um, the next student that I would like to announce as a finalist is Arif Shridraj, and he is an Earth Science Data Science intern. He's an undergraduate in mechanical engineering, and I see Garesh on the phone. So hopefully Garesh can tell us more about him and his work within EarthSense, which has an awful lot of robots inside its, its lab right now. So things are busy in agriculture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you can see, but uh, yeah, here we are in EarthSense. So we're really uh, happy and proud to have Arif be nominated. Uh, so Arif joined us, I think, four months ago, and it's just been a crazy fast ride with him. He's really elevated a number of different uh, parts of the company. So he was uh, tasked with uh, kind of reviving one of our algorithms that wasn't performing to spec. Um, and not only did he revive it, he showed that it beat the competition uh, by a meaningful way. So that was pretty cool that he kind of uh, did all of the work, uh, including uh, figuring out the, you know, the papers and the literature to read and then going through them, figuring out what was missing in our existing algorithms and implementing them. He worked with others. He brought the full-time people in to help him do that. Uh, and then uh, he implemented it and, and it's been working and it's been really implemented and, and is a key part of our product. So we're really uh, happy and proud that ARF's nominated and we're hoping that uh, he'll stick around for longer after he's uh, done with his internship. Awesome. Well, thanks Garesh for telling us more about him. And next, as we have a full category here, we have Aman Kinbasaru, Kinbasara, sorry if I said that wrong, AARP Strategic Integration and Talent Intern, undergraduate in computer engineering. See if we see Aman waving his hand. And there he is. And his manager um, to say a little bit more about him. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, I, yeah, I, at AARP, we do a lot of uh, prototyping work, which is relevant to AARP's mission of enriching uh, life of 50 plus people. And uh, one of the uh, the prototypes that we wanted to establish was an uh, a virtual reality event experience for our members. Uh, which is about a 37 million strong members for uh, in this times of uh, virtual events and, and uh, hybrid events. And uh, Aman basically helped us uh, prototype, uh, ideate, uh, iterate, and he showed a lot of bias for action, where uh, even in the, the with ambiguous requirements, he was able to establish a path forward and, and kept moving forward till we had a prototype of an event experience in in virtual reality, which we could share with our event management team. 
and uh, collect some really meaningful feedback. So in, in this internship, Aman has definitely uh, demonstrated great skills in terms of uh, uh, working with the business, uh, coming up with technical solutions which are relevant, and uh, be in the design thinking phase where you ideate, prototype, uh, develop, test, and, and keep iterating on those concepts. So uh, great work, Aman, here, and, and we really enjoyed working with him. And again, I, I cannot reiterate the fact, but his bias for action definitely helped us uh, make things move in the right direction and, and helped us implement something in this short span of uh, 13 weeks. Thank you. Thank you to Aman. And I like bias to action. I might use that one. Okay. Last but not least, we have one more finalist in this category, and it's Gautam Krishnan from Corteva in the research park. He is a contracted student researcher working. Corteva is one of the largest ag companies, and they maybe will tell you a little bit more if you're not familiar with the company. Graduate in theoretical and applied mathematics, oh, mechanics, applied mechanics here at the University of Illinois, I believe. Can we have Steve Cryer tell you a little bit more about his work? Uh, I don't think Steve made it. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm going to. I will read about you a little bit of what he wrote about you then, and then sure. I'll come back to you to get to say a few words, guys. Okay, so Steve said the following about his work. He is, is more than diligent in completing his work, setting up ambitious weekly objectives and executing on them. He has taken real ownership of the project, developing the model in the direction he sees as most, most impactful. I have tried to challenge him to keep the focus on the end deliverable, before we had unknowingly only been modeling a relatively small fraction of the do droplets, which form strictly due to the breakup mechanism. Gautam's additions and revisions change this, improving the quality of the predictions we can make. He has contributed further by performing a robustness study to determine which of the hyperparameters latent in the model most strongly affect the predictions so that we can be sensitive to points of error. Galvin has made substantial progress to the current state of the art, and I hope this award will, award will recognize him for those contributions. So that's a little bit about what your manager had to say about you. Can you tell him a little bit more about your experience working at Corteva? Yeah, um, so I just started working with Corteva this summer um, and um, I've taken on a project with them, which is to do with uh, predicting how particular agricultural sprays break up. and. Uh, much of my experiences in mathematical modeling. So I've had a lot of fun in uh, trying to put that in, into action here on a, on a problem that actually um, means a lot to the company and to the industry in that um, they've, they've, they've been having this um, uh, project or idea going on for almost a decade you now. And uh, it's, it's, it's really great to be able to contribute to it. Awesome. Okay, those are our four finalists in the category of best technical innovation and tough competition in this award as well. And the winner for the best technical innovation is Arif. And I think Arif is here Yay. from Earth Sense. Yay. Yay, Goresh is happy. <laughs> hi, guys. Right, Arif, I see you. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, so would you like me to say a few words? Yeah. Um, We'd love to hear about your experience at Earth Sense and your internship. Yeah, um, so I was freshly graduated and 2020 was a hard year, so I was pretty nervous coming in and um, I was unsure when I would be able to uh, contribute, but luckily the people there, um, they were very open and welcoming to questions and I had a lot of them because, um, yeah, and uh, because I got so many like thoughtful responses and it was so easy to collaborate with other people, it just helped me um, feel like I was a part of the team. And I felt comfortable there so I could really like think properly and I felt valued at work because of that as well. Um, I get to learn and implement a lot every day and it's also for a good cause. So I'm pretty happy with my internship. And finally, I'm feeling very grateful because the people at EarthSense who have worked for a while decided to nominate me in the first place. So thank you for that. Congratulations, Arif, and congratulations to all the finalists. As Laura said, crowded category on this one, tough decision for the judges. Um, most outstanding graduate student intern is the next category for the research park. And we are pleased to see so many graduate students that make contributions despite having 
perhaps a PhD they're pursuing and numerous other obligations and their technical accomplishments are really vital to many of these organizations. The next uh, finalist that we will recognize also is from Brunswick. Adish Dilip Natik, sorry, Naik. I completely butchered, I am sorry, Adish. So you can correct me of how it's actually supposed to be pronounced or more accurately, I think Trevor is going to do that for me because he's your manager and he is the one that nominated you. And he has many nice things to say about this graduate student in electrical and computer engineering. Yep, so it's Adish Naik. And uh, unfortunately, Adish is uh, not able to join us today. He uh, is standing up in a friend's wedding right now. So as we speak, I believe he is not on the line today. Uh, I think it's a good excuse, Trevor, being in a wedding. That one works. That one works. <laughs> So Adish uh, has been with uh, Brunswick also since uh, uh, summer of last year. So he's been with us for uh, a year and a couple months. Um, he uh, has, uh, it's interesting with Adish, when he came into the team, we, we started him in a bit of a, a role with leadership and it was an area that he struggled and had to kind of fight his way through. And uh, over the last year, he has become a clear leader within the team, uh, especially this spring and summer, he really took on a leadership role and is, has uh, become a mentor for many other students. He's taught them how to lead, taught them how to uh, work on the different projects that they're doing, give them technical expertise. Uh, and really he's become uh, kind of the scrum master for multiple projects that we have going on here and uh, uh, guiding the different students on different projects. Uh, he's also, uh, stood up our first data acquisition system that uh, we're working with here. He's implemented new software uh, capabilities for perception systems. He's implemented different sensors into that uh, data acquisition system. Uh, just doing a fantastic job. Uh, couldn't be more proud of the growth that he's had over the last year. Awesome. Thank you, Trevor, for telling us more about Adish. And the next final in, finalist in this category is Anisha from Corteva, Anisha Johari, and she was nominated by Yannick Jumba Funan, who has a, a more to tell us about her work. And I thought he's on the screen, and I'm sorry, I probably butchered your name as well, um, but can her supervisor tell us a little bit more about her contributions? She is a graduate student in information management. Hi, uh, yeah, Anisha is, um has joined the, the group uh, a few months ago and uh, she's working on uh, a software package that's called Biotransformer. So it's um, a package that aims at uh, predicting how small molecules are transformed within species, uh, living species I might add. So from uh, uh, animals to, um, to environmental microbes. So that, you know, uh, aims at, um, uh, quantifying or at least uh, characterizing the um, molecules that we are exposed um, um, to. So this is really critical uh, in terms of capabilities within uh, companies that um, um, operate in the molecular design uh, framework. So agro agrochemical company, pharmaceutical companies, but also um, environmental science um, uh, specialists. So the tool Biotransformer has gained a lot of uh, a lot of users and is the center of a, 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 an increasingly large community. And Anisha has been working uh, with us uh, with the goal to kind of uh, improve the tool, to modularize it, to add a number of other capabilities that were not provided with the tool. Um, it's an open source tool, so it, it it has a huge impact not just for the company, but um, you know for other researchers around the world. So. Our goal is to make it, you know, uh, in the long term, uh, a standard for a metabolism prediction. So she's very dedicated. I mean, we, we've been really impressed. I've had my share of uh, interns over the last few years, and she's by far the best. Um, and that's something that we, uh, my, my um, colleague and I noticed from the beginning. I mean, she was already looking at the code online before we actually even interviewed her, which, I mean, I think she was the only one one of you know um one of two people who did that um she's been very proactive so she just doesn't stay and wait for um us to tell her exactly what to do she knows exactly where we're going and she's been adapting it herself and, and working in an environment where i mean even though she's she's not very familiar with chemistry uh she's very familiar with the software development part of things and she's really proactive and 
and very responsive. So we've been very pleased um, with her work uh, to the point where uh, we have um, applied for an extension of the funding and she'll be continuing with us for uh, the next term. Um, and uh, we plan to work in the area of software development, but also machine learning. So um, we were very pleased to have uh, her on board and uh, we're looking forward to the next, uh, next weeks and months to come. Awesome. Well, that's quite a lot of nice things to say about Anisha. You're apparently the best. Best they've seen. Tall order. Okay, next finalist is Eddie Chapman from Abbey, And I am guessing that Kirsten might be here to tell a little bit more about Eddie, who is a graduate student in computer science working as a library information specialist. And since Kirsten has a similar designation, this might be close to your field and heart. Yes, and actually, um, you know, Eddie joined in 2018, um, has continued with us as he's transitioned to his grad program. So he out senior, um, has more time with the company than I do. Um, and I think to fully explain the depth of his work and his contributions, we actually have two colleagues um, from Avvi who are here to join us. So Bill Bryce is actually his direct supervisor. Um, and Bill is a senior scientist with our library and information services team. So I'm actually going to let Bill speak in his own words um, a little bit more about Eddie. So go ahead, Bill. Uh, the first thing I'm going to say about Eddie is the first uh, the first time I really got to interact with him, which was when we interviewed him in 2018. And uh, this interview uh, took place on a train, ultimately. And uh, I remember this conversation. We have this time slot for you. Oh, I'm going to be on a train at that time. All right. Can we make this? Can we make this work? And he said, Oh no, we'll find out. And uh, let's find out. And uh, and uh, it was, I mean, I think there were some tunnels and dead zones, but obviously it was a success and we hired him and we um, really, really appreciated, uh, you know, his personality and his professionalism from the start. Um, as a matter of fact, I wrote down a list of buzzwords here that I didn't want a sentence to get in the way of. So I'm just going to say I'm work ethic, communication, professionalism, composure, grace, inquisitiveness, curiosity, responsive, responsible. I uh, just wanted to fit all of those in there because all of those really conjure up an image of Eddie for me. And I think also for our search team as well. Um, 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 when we, our search team at Abvi has to deliver quality results to so many scientists uh, at the company and any help that the team can get um, to, to really kind of deliver those results faster, more accurately and what have you is really such a benefit to the search team. And that's the kind of work that Eddie has really come through for us on. Um, not only just with the initial tasks that we originally had in mind for him, but also with the um, imagining and the development of those tasks um, throughout uh, his time here. And it's been really fun uh, to watch him grow uh, professionally, uh, not only his skill set, but to also kind of mature with within the group uh, that that uh, that has really taken advantage of his work the most. It's been fun for me to watch the conversation within the search team uh, evolve from, can we do this to, uh, can Eddie do this? And uh, that's how I know, right, that he's really made an impact uh, on the people that he's that he's serving here. And, uh, you know, it, uh, every moment working with him is a pleasure. And that's all I think I could say. Well, no, I could say more, but that's all I will say. That's awesome, Bill. And Bill has been leading library initiatives for Abvi since almost the beginning as well. So I know his words of praise are sincere and he has seen many students along that journey. So um, awesome job to Eddie in, in becoming a capability within the department, <laughs> something like that, of somebody who can Eddie do it. I love that. Okay, our next finalist is going to be Prane from Corteva, just looking on the screen to see if we have her here. And I know I see Jason, who is her manager. He is her, ma Jason is Prane's manager and Prane, is, uh, I don't know if we have him here. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm here. Oh, sorry, Prane, I didn't see, I couldn't see you earlier. Prane is a graduate student in aerospace engineering and his ma manager, Jason Jacks, is his nominee and um, Corteva ha has him working in the area of field sensing and data science. Jason, can you tell us more about him? 
Absolutely. Uh, thank you, everyone. And, and thank you for doing these awards. I think this is a really great uh, internship program. And it's really nice to be able to recognize some of the hard work that all these uh, young scientists and, and uh, contributors uh, are doing. Um, Prene was uh, immediately uh, caught my eye when we did internship interviews this, uh, this for the summer. Um, in fact, I knew within about five minutes that uh, I was going to hire him or at least offer him a role. And I know uh, after about uh, you know 15 minute conversation, I was pretty much done asking questions and, and I asked him if he had any questions and he said, yeah, are you not going to ask me any more questions? And, and I said, well, look, I, Obviously, you have a technical skill set. That's great, but you also have passion and enthusiasm. And in fact, he had gone already far enough along to research the project that we were hiring for, and came to the interview with thoughts. and And for me, it, it, a lot of people have high skill sets, um, but not everybody has that combination of high skill set and enthusiasm and passion. And that's what will make Prani a great scientist. Um, and so, for his, in terms of his project. He's made in, uh, really great uh, contributions to the project. Um, the work we do uh, for my team is focused around uh, what we call precision phenotyping, which uh, helps our genetic scientists to um, promote the best uh, possible crop uh, during our, our field trials and ultimately get uh, the best seed in the hands of farmers and growers around the world. So uh, the work we do is to sort of automate that process uh, or at least part of that process. And I think Prene can be proud that the work he is doing is contributing to somewhere uh, at some point a, a farmer will get a better seed, make more money, feed more people. And uh, that's really something that uh, he can be proud of. So thank you Prene for your hard work. Prene, thank you so much for all you've done and Jason's words speak strongly about your accomplishments and so we really appreciate your work at Corteva. And with that, another tough category, lots of really brilliant uh, students and accomplishments that have gone to companies. And I'm very happy to say that the winner for the most outstanding graduate student this year is Eddie Chapman, since 2018, contributing to AbbVie at the Research Park. Eddie, tell us about your journey. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's a pleasure. It's an honor to receive the award and recognition. Um, thank you to Bill and Kirsten. Um, like Kirsten said, I've been uh, fortunate enough to have a couple years at AbbVie, so I've gotten to um, see my work grow and develop over time. I've gotten to see projects go from uh, just you know envisioning, collecting requirements, to implementing uh, software for the the library searchers and getting to deploy it and get the feedback. Um, so it's been really cool to see the whole life cycle of a couple projects. Um, it's been a really great opportunity to work with the Abbey library. Everybody there has been very supportive, um, giving great feedback and being patient. Uh, you know, when I can't figure something out uh, or, or think it might not take as long as it does. Uh, so yeah, it's just been um, a great experience to grow and learn. And um, Bill has been a really excellent mentor. Um, he's always helped me out along the way and you know helped translate things for me and kind of guide me when I'm overthinking something or things like that. And then um, at the AIC, Kirsten and Jerome have done a really great job of making everybody feel welcome and connected even uh, during the pandemic when people were remote. So um, yeah, I've really loved my time at AbbVie and uh, I'm excited for the next semester. Awesome. Well, congratulations, Eddie, and thank you for all you do for AbbVie Innovation Center. Thank you. We are moving to the next category and it's going to be the most outstanding undergraduate student intern. And we have four finalists in this category as well. And the first that I will introduce is Daniel. Daniel looks like polite, so maybe he's very polite, but I don't think that's necessarily how it's pronounced. I'll let him correct me if it's wrong. Um, he is politely working on actuarial science, perhaps. Um, undergraduate in actuarial science, he is a State Farm actuarial and modeling intern. And Visi Ru is his supervisor who has words to share about his role and his impressive work in rate-making guidance. 
Yep. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I think it's uh, Daniel Pilates. Um, oh, but, okay. Uh, Sorry. Yep. So um, definitely a lot to say about Daniel. Um, this has been my first semester working with Daniel, but Daniel has been with State Farm for two semesters. So I would say um, Daniel is one of those guys who are really having those sharp learning curve, uh, great critical thinking skills, but also very passionate about the work he has been doing for State Farm. So uh, this semester he has been taking a project, uh, which it's actually the first time ever we uh, adopted a uh, multivariate uh, uh, regression analysis for a new uh, for the farm ranch line, uh, line business. So uh, we encountered uh, some hiccups in the beginning of the semester, the data source. Uh, for anyone who is working with data, you know how, uh, how important the data source is. Uh, if you have garbage in, garbage out. So we just kept that in mind. Uh, so that's Daniel. Um, so Daniel diligently reviewed the data and uh, really provided a lot of useful feedback to the data source team to revise the, the data as well as reorganize their data uh, pool code. So I definitely imagine uh, Daniel's work will uh, make a huge contribution for the same line of business in the future, which will save them a lot of time in pulling the data. So in the meantime, uh, Daniel has also been uh, doing the modeling for this line of business. So uh, his work, uh, as I mentioned, it's the first time ever we adopted this approach. So he uh, understood the concept in depth and tried to apply what he learned in, into the project. And he also was trying to understand the big picture. So that's not very common to see in a lot of our interns, like understand the insurance, how insurance has been working. So a lot of great questions from Daniel throughout the semester. Um, so for the project, uh, Daniel uh, has been accomplished uh, this semester. It will have um, millions of dollars of impact on thousands of the uh, state farm policies in the future. So definitely a very impactful project going forward. Um, so also outside of his uh, project work, he has been the representative uh, for a fan commi uh, committee at the State Farm. So he has been fully engaged in this internship, but he is also engaging other interns. So he made our work much more fun in this virtual setting. So I really appreciate all the contributions Daniel made in this internship. Thank you, Daniel, for bringing the smarts and fun to actuarial science and rate making. And I'm going to keep Bissy around because she nominated another student who is also a finalist this year. And that is Nico Laval from State Farm, who is an undergraduate student in statistics. And he is also working on modeling. So can you tell us a little bit more about Nico? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'll keep the conversation here. So uh, Nico definitely has been a very uh, strong uh, intern in our program. So I consider him being another star player uh, at the State Farm internship. So he has been with us for two semesters uh, up to this spring. So he is taking the time off. So you won't uh, be able to see him today because he is just enjoying his uh, real summer vacation right now, but he will back, be back in the fall. So he has also been working on a rate making project uh, here at State Farm. Uh, so I would just tell one story about Nico, uh, the most impressive one. So uh, last semester, he was working on a team. Uh, he was not a lead intern assigned on that team, but uh, his lead intern was actually uh, have to drop off, uh, drop out the program due to some personal uh, circumstances. And um, as, at that time, Nico was a first semester intern. So he stepped into this lead intern role with a very short notice. And he carried out the rest of the project for his team, actually. So he did not only just finish up the work assigned to him, but also taking on additional project work, as well as the lead intern's responsibilities. So his project was considered a great success in the end and uh, adding a huge value to that line of business uh, at the State Farm. So his, his uh, project work will also be potentially impacting uh, thousands of the policies as well at uh, State Farm. So like both me like the, as a supervisor, as well as, as uh, other managers are very impressed by his independent research ability, his adaptability, as well as his uh, leadership skills. 
Um, so uh, yeah, with that, uh, we are very exciting to have Nico uh, being with uh, being with us around for another few semesters, and hopefully he could uh, stay with State Farm longer. So yeah, thank you, Vissy. And our next finalist is Adam Zhao from Corteva. Um, excited to hear more about this undergraduate in computer science who is working as a data science intern. And Shravan, it's, I think his supervisor will be telling you more about. I'm not sure if he is present or- no, I'm here. Okay, oh, there he is. Okay, great. Tell us more about Adam. Yeah, I'm happy to talk about Adam. Um, he's been a really wonderful intern for us. Uh, when, when he joined us this summer, uh, we set him up with kind of a very difficult but impactful project and difficult because uh, he had to develop a set of tools and visualizations for really, really messy genomics data that he didn't uh, quite understand easily, but he really put in that effort uh, to learn a, a lot about a new domain for him quickly. And you, you can really tell that he's taken the effort because I, I would get these messages saying, hey, there's this edge case that doesn't work. There's this edge case, what, what's that about? And, you know, so we'd have that conversation back and forth. So to really understand what's going on. So that's something I really appreciate uh, about Adam. Uh, but also, you know, uh, the tools that he developed are going to be super impactful for the team uh, going forward uh, to make sense of all of that data in a nice clean way. Uh, so in order to develop those tools, he's uh, shown remarkable technical proficiency. But I think the, the what I really appreciated the most about Adam is how he thinks really about the future because one of the questions that he kept asking um, is how many data points this is going to have, not just for now, but in the future, you know, five years from now. So he, he really, uh, and I think that really showed how he was focusing not just on his immediate deliverables, but also thinking what this tool could become and how to prepare for those data scale up challenges. And he had no problem saying, you know, this framework that you're suggesting isn't right, uh, and here's a better one. So I uh, really appreciate his uh, being so easy to work with and just wanted to thank Adam for his work and congratulate him for a deserved finalist spot for the most outstanding undergraduate intern. Thanks, Adam. Thank you for sharing more about Adam. And next. Our last finalist in this category is Neil Koshikar and Julia Hart, I see, is here from Country Financial to tell us more about this undergraduate student in computer science who is working as a financial software developer and project manager at Country's Digital Lab. Julia. Yes. So, yes, I nominated Neil because um, Neil has outstanding leadership skills. He was actually hired in the lab as a software developer in the spring. Um, semester and after just one semester we promoted him to project manager because he shows such um, uh, amazing organizational and uh, leadership skills. A project that really stands out that Neil's been involved with is an AI communications platform and this is a project where he's working um, to develop a system, a, an artificial intelligence callback system um, integrating Azure cognitive services with some of our systems at country. And we actually just uh, went to Bloomington yesterday and uh, had a presentation for the directors. And so they were very impressed with, with that work that we were able to come up with something that started as an idea in the spring to a POC in just a short amount of time. So that was pretty amazing. Um, outside of his project management skills, Neil is really dependable. The students in the lab really enjoy working with him. He, you know, always make sure that they you know, understand what's going on or who they need to talk to at the home office, um, keeps them on schedule. So I think that everyone really enjoys Neil and gets along with him um, very well. So he's definitely been a, a very much of an asset to the lab and uh, to the home office for helping moving country financial forward. Awesome job, Neil, and great words from Julia about your accomplishments. Glad you got to show off at headquarters yesterday. She posted some pictures, so I saw, saw some of that uh, FaceTime you all were getting there with your projects. It's pretty awesome. Okay, well, it's my pleasure to get to introduce that the winner of the most un outstanding undergraduate intern in the research park this year is Daniel Polites. Congratulations, Daniel. Daniel, tell us about your work at State Farm. 
Sure thing. Thank you, Laura. Um, I've had a great time at State Farm these past two semesters. It's, it's really been a good chance to, to learn about the rate making process and insurance. And so I've had a great time kind of developing professionally that way. Um, and, and personally too, um, I've had a great time with, with the coworkers there and, and our mentors and managers at Safe Farm. Uh, I've, I've really enjoyed, they have a really like relational focus with, with how they're running their internship. And so that's been a great time. We, we last week got to go into the office for the first time and actually meet the people we've been working with for like six months. And uh, it was just like a seamless transition. Like I've been working with them in person for, for months and months because of that. And so I've been super appreciative for the time I've gotten to work here so far and, and for, for Visi for, for being a great mentor and, and manager and nominating me for this. So yeah, thank you very much. Awesome, great job, Daniel. Next, we're gonna to move to the next category. Congratulations, Daniel. Now we're gonna to move to the most competent, and I hope we don't have incompetent teams, but the most competent and the most collaborative team working together in the research park. We have three, we have three finalists of teams from three companies, the Ameren Innovation Center, Synchrony, and from Brunswick iJet. We've heard a little bit more about already tonight. And so first we're gonna to go to our first finalist team from Synchrony and I believe that we have Mike Storiali to tell us more about the team and how they're working together across many different disciplines. I see it's a mix of aerospace and computer science, information science, data science, electrical engineering, finance, accounting, math. Pretty amazing crew here. Tell us about them, Mike. Yeah, so this is a pretty amazing crew that was pulled together at the very start of the pandemic. So when Synchrony went home, there was a immediate recognition that returning to the office was never going to be the same. So we pulled together a cross-functional team uh, to create the future of hoteling for Synchrony. Uh, so this team did everything from scoping dozens of possible application partners to engineering and data analysis, um, and ultimately created the technology that we are going to be using as we return to office, actually that some of us are using as we're returning to office uh, across 22 global sites and over 20,000 employees. They're still in the process of rolling some of this out. It's gone from early, early scoping all the way through to uh, final rollout, and they have a couple more phases to go. Um, and they have presented their work all the way up to uh, our president and CEO, as well as our executive leadership team, and have had to manage up and out throughout the entire process, right? Making sure that site leaders and executive leaders um, are both getting what they need and that we're creating a product that's gonna work for the diverse diff, uh, groups of backgrounds that we have uh, throughout the company. And so it's been an often demanding and tiresome nature to create some of this. I think all of us have a new uh, understanding of facilities as they've updated Corinne and I on the work that they've had to do over the recent months, but they're still in the process of their major rollout and, uh, and have done some really amazing work. Very proud of them. Awesome, Mike. Okay, I hope some of these students are here. I'm going to read off their names kind of quickly. And if you're if you're here, join us um, on on uh, turn your video on. First, I have Emily Tokarski, who is a graduate student in aerospace systems engineering. Anushka Bossi, who is an undergraduate in computer science. And we have Amy Chen, who is an undergraduate in information systems. Emily Vera, who is an undergraduate in computer science. And we have Washing Dai, who is an undergraduate in data science. We have Ashish Paba, who is a graduate in electrical engineering. We have Wei Yang, who's a graduate in electrical engineering, graduate student in electrical engineering. Rudra Patel, an undergraduate in finance and accounting. And Vinay Vinayak Adukia, a graduate in financial mathematics. So if you can wave to us, Say hi off microphone for a, for a minute. I want to hear your voices and just say hello and thank you for all you've accomplished. Hi. Hey, thanks, Mike. Hey, hey everyone. Oh, thanks, Karen. Cool. Well, I'm sure lots of companies would like to hear from the, the type of work that you are doing because this has been a challenging year. So it seems fitting to hear about your work and a year of, that has been the pandemic and how you're able to impact a company of their transition through that process. Thank you, team, and uh, proud that you got to uh, deliver your projects to your president and CEO. That's an amazing opportunity. Thanks for sharing, Mike. Our next team that has that is a finalist is the Ameren team, the Ameren Innovation Center, 
is proud to talk about an Innovation Center data team. And I will start by reading their names first so that they can come off of video and that, or come on to video so that we'll be able to see this team too. And I know I see James who is going to say a little bit more as their manager about them as well. So I'm gonna read their names. Um, we have Steven Brogen, who is an undergraduate in computer engineering. So wave if you're here, any of you. We have Sarah Simpson, a graduate in mathematics. We have Edward Tang, who is a graduate in technology management. Jeremy Lipschatz, who is an undergraduate in computer science. Katie Cabby, who's an undergraduate in psychology. Ashley Alfred, who is a graduate in mathematics. Xander Pero, uh, an undergraduate in industrial engineering. And Maori Lira, an undergraduate in mechanical engineering. So another great team that's highly interdisciplinary and hopefully inspires all of you who are managers to think about how to put skill sets together. James from Ameren, tell us more about this incredible crew. Hey, thanks, Laura. Um, hi, everyone. My name is James Cabas. Uh, like Laura said, I'm a data scientist at Ameren. Um, I was actually a former research park intern with Ameren, and I've been you know, happy to come on full time. Um, this is my first time leading a team like this, and I got really, really lucky with the interns we hired. Um, my team is thrilled to be nominated uh, with such an amazing group of interns. Um, I'm just going to really quick touch on some of the projects they completed this summer because they were seriously impressive. Uh, we had a team that um, put together a gas leak detection algorithm which was able to uh, detect the gas leaks real time for Ameren system. And we were looking as a company how to roll it into production. Uh, we had a team put together a machine learning pipeline and algorithm uh, to predict which customers are most likely to respond to Ameren smart thermostat, central air conditioning, and electrical efficiency programs. Um, we had a team that worked with Illinois Gas to assign each pipe a consequence of failure metric using data and machine learning. Uh, we built an in-house version of Git using AWS and Python. And we worked with several teams across Ameren to automate dashboard creation and how to get that data from point A to point B in an automated fashion, eliminating several dozens of hours of man hours every week. Um, when the summer kicked off, I gave the interns a hackathon. I asked them to create asteroids using Python. They came back seven hours later with a fully functional game. Um, we had weekly team builders. We had chess tournaments and board game sessions. Uh, we hosted Python training courses for the rest of Ameren. And we met for short morning meetings using Kanban with fun icebreakers and really efficient meetings uh, to get what we needed throughout the day. Um, this summer has, has seriously drastically changed the, uh, the reputation of the ice center among, um, you know, Ameren's coworkers. And they did a really good job of making me uh, look good and it made my job easy. So that for that reason, I nominated the Ameren data science team. Thank you. Awesome, thanks so much, James. And we love seeing people who were former interns go on to become managers of students. So. It's a pathway that's pretty amazing to see in process here at the research park. Our next team is the finalist from Brunswick's iJet Lab. And I know that Trevor is gonna tell us more about it. This is a team of two, so a little different than the last ones we heard about, and includes Quentin uh, Rizzerardi, and graduate student in material science, and Bakit uh, Shriek Kumar, and undergraduate in material science. So specifically talk about their work in material science and how they have worked on um, impacting voting technologies. Trevor, tell us about their work. Yeah, I can do that. So I think uh, uh, from a soft skills standpoint, I think what's really impressive with this team is that um, the, the way that they complement each other so well. So Quentin, as described in your intro, is a, a PhD in material science and uh, uh, he has done fantastic work just uh, uh, mentoring Von Chit as an undergrad student and giving him some guidance and, and helping him uh, stay on the right path. And then uh, Von Chit is just such a great researcher for an undergrad student to be able to identify good research uh, and then pull out the meaningful content for our use case. And uh, between the two of them, they, they work really well together. Quentin is a fantastic mentor and, and a born uh, teacher and leader. Um, just it, it's clear to me that he cares uh, as much about Von Chit's development as his own. And uh, just fantastic working with these two. Uh, the projects that they're working on was around uh, taking copy therm and thermal, uh, thermal calc and evaluating the softwares for being capable of uh, uh, improving some of the, uh, the materials that we use in some of our products, specifically stainless steels, uh, looking at grain refinement, looking at uh, uh, 
delta ferrite uh, content and some of these things for improving the materials for structural uh, uh, um, soundness. So uh, fantastic work that they've been doing. The, the biggest piece of, uh, um, uh, the biggest note on, on how well they've done is that their, their mentor at Mercury Marine had commented about that uh, he told his boss that he should fire him and, and replace him with these two. So uh, that's a pretty high praise from, uh, from George up in Fond du Lac. So uh, appreciate the work and uh, uh, love working with these two. Awesome. Thanks, Trevor. So you're already displacing full-time people. That's how impactful the students can be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it's my pleasure to tell you who is the team that is winning, the most competent and collaborative team this year. And I see them all together. So I hope this is like a Lydia Jacoby moment with her teammates in uh, Seward, Alaska. And you can all jump up and down because I see you together. It is the Ameren Innovation Center. So congratulations. Is there a spokesperson for your group? I, I don't know if you all have audio there. Hi guys, um, thank you so much. This is an awesome uh, opportunity to have and we're very excited um, to win. Um, this is just a great team and everybody has had a really good time working together. And as James said, we've um, really accomplished some of these great projects. Um, and we've gotten a lot closer, although we're virtual, we've gotten a lot closer through these uh, chess tournaments and you know daily icebreakers. And Jeremy's not with us here, but you can probably see him. He's got a nice little, uh, background of the eye center here um again thank you guys so much and um, it's just an honor to be recognized among these great teams thank you awesome well i hope you'll come across the street and celebrate with us um those are have i yes i think those are our awards right laura i've got my order of awards correct and so we're going to go out with a bang for the team award and we are going to invite you to come over to the Atkins building. Sorry, I was thinking patio, but the Atkins building for um, some uh, refreshments and celebration of all of you. And thank you so much to all of you as managers that clearly are inspiring students to do amazing work. Wow, so impressive to hear about everybody's accomplishments.